Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. All right, folks, in this episode, we're gonna go over how to rig a diving minnow for trolling. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great, exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, so like I said, we are going over how to rig a diving minnow for trolling. Sometimes these can be misconstrued as freshwater fishing baits. They are not. They can go back and forth and do whatever. But if you're gonna rig them up for trolling, there's a couple little modifications I like to make so that it will help you get into the bite and it will keep this bad boy trolling straight streamline, not acting erratic, and thus decreasing your hookup ratio. What this is, is this is a Yozuri Crystal Minnow. It's a five and a quarter inch lure that weighs three quarters of an ounce. So what you're gonna wanna do when you're selecting your lure, of course, is you're gonna wanna think about the water that you're trolling in. Is it greener, is it bluer, is it browner? Of course, you want your bait to match the water. A misplaced bait will more than likely decrease your hookup ratio. A bait that kind of matches the localized fishery of bait that's swimming around will more than likely increase your hookup ratio. All right, folks, so we're not gonna waste much more time. We're gonna get into the rigging right now so that you can get out on the water, put this bad boy in, get it all wetted up, and start pulling it and get into that bite. Okay, to do this properly, you're gonna need a few things. The Yozuri Crystal Minnow in the color of your choice. Two 3 0 inline trolling hooks. Notice the difference of how a standard hook has the eye turned perpendicular and set like this, and an inline trolling hook is made so that it can swing freely underneath a lure. It is a big difference in the hook that you will be using. An 80 pound solid ring. Six to 10 feet of 60 pound monofilament leader. Two double barrel crimps rated for 60 pound test monofilament. A pair of split ring pliers. Split ring pliers have this little tooth to open up split rings which are basically little miniature key rings. And a crimping tool. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna notice that when you purchase your Yozuri Crystal Minnow from the manufacturer, it comes with treble hooks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out these hooks with these, the inline single J-hook trolling hooks. You'll notice that the treble hooks are attached with split rings. That's where our split ring pliers comes into play. So what we'll do is we're just gonna simply find the end of that split ring, open it up, and carefully remove the treble hook. There's one. And there's two. Now we are simply going to install our inline trolling hooks where we remove those from. We will take our split ring pliers, we will open up the split ring, and we'll take our hook and once you feel it grab, it is just like winding a key onto a key ring. That one is installed. Then we'll do the next one. Again, you'll find the end of your split ring, pinch it open, take your hook, get it to bite, and then it's just the mechanics of winding the ring onto the hook. So now both of our hooks are installed. So as you can see, they dangle straight down, facing forward, and they will troll in line. And when the fish bites, you will get the hook up. Okay, so we're gonna set our lure aside and now we're going to work on making our leader. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the lure end of our leader first. So we will take one of our little double barrel crimps and we're gonna feed it onto our leader. Then we're going to take the solid ring. Now, let me stop you. At this point, 
You can choose to use a barrel swivel if you want to. I don't use barrel swivels for these lures because this lure does not spin in the water. Therefore, you don't need to avoid any spinning by using a barrel swivel. Using a solid ring is perfectly fine. We are going to feed our solid ring onto the leader. Then we will just loop it back around and feed it back into the second hole of the double barrel crimp. And then what we will do is we will slide that down into place, leaving just enough breathing room for some stretch. Now, we're going to open up our crimp tool. Very carefully, we are going to crimp our crimp shut. Now, when crimping, you wanna make sure that you're using the right size slot for the right size crimp. You wanna make sure you got it pretty much right in the center. Make sure it's lined up in the crimp tool properly. And then you will simply crimp it down. And you're good to go. Now you'll notice even though it's a small crimp, it's got a little bit of flare on the front and on the back. So that is the lure side of our leader prepped. The next thing we'll do is we'll find the main line end of it. And we're gonna make a loop that will attach to a swivel to our main line. So simply feed the line through your double barrel crimp, loop it back around. And you wanna leave about, you know, maybe a one inch loop, something like that. That way you've got enough, you know, stretch and bite. That way you don't get a crotch break. And you just simply crimp that one shut too. And that is the main line loop that will attach to a swivel on your main line. All right, and now the last thing to do is we are going to fasten our leader with the solid ring onto the nose of our lure, which comes with a pre-installed split ring from the factory. We're going to open up one end. And feed on our solid ring. Once you get it to bite, just like feeding a key on a key ring. And there you have it. Your lure is rigged up and ready to get in the water and get it trolling. And now the final step to this process, of course, is to take a snap swivel with a coast lock, feed your loop onto it, close the coast lock clasp, you're ready to dip it in the water, get up trolling, and go look for that bite. All right, and so that is how you modify and rig up this lure for trolling. What you'll notice is I put the inline hooks on it. They're 3-0 hooks. You're gonna wanna pay attention and you're gonna wanna get this size hook and this style of hook. What it's going to do is it is going to provide the right balance for this lure. Bigger hooks, or smaller hooks will throw the balance out of it. So, you're gonna dunk this bad boy in the water. You're gonna to wanna to troll this between four and eight knots. It's gonna act perfectly normal and entice the impulse to feed on actively hunting fish at that speed range. The key about the speed range is the faster you go, the deeper it's gonna dive. At around four knots, this thing is gonna dive down to about three and a half feet below the water's surface. Closer to the eight knot range, it will go down to about seven to eight feet below the surface range. It's not gonna dive down to 20 feet or 50 feet or anything like that. This is a shallow diving minnow lure. It's made to represent fish like ballyhoo and sardines and small flying fish up almost in the top of the water column. And again, we're trolling. We're not going so slow that we're giving fish the opportunity to come up and examine our bait. You are in pursuit of fish that are actively hunting. That is what trolling is. They're hunting, which means they're gonna act on the impulse to feed on a bait that is cruising by acting erratic. Single baits that have broken away from a bait pod are always the easy target for predator fish. So, when you're trolling this lure around, you're gonna wanna use gear like this. This is light spinning gear. It is rated for the 12 to 20 pound class, and it's on a seven foot spinning rod. You can also use 
medium class spinning gear for 15 to 30 pound class and the same rod rated for that weight 15 to 30 pound class medium action you're going to want it to use some shock absorbency and finally you control it on something like this which is light conventional gear again 15 to 30 pound class same seven foot rod 15 to 30 pound class medium action the rod has a lot of bend to it. It's gonna give you a lot of shock absorbency. You're gonna to wanna to consider trolling with monofilament on your main line and you'll attach it to your leader, which is also monofilament. What that does is that helps you set the hook. You've got the shock absorbency of the rod, the stretch of the monofilament, and the stretch of your leader. And what that does is when the fish hits, it pulls the hooks back towards you and it helps set them deep. That way the fish don't get off, especially when they get right up to the boat. So this lure is a great little lure because of its versatility. You're gonna be able to troll it over the shallows of the reef, anywhere from 20 to 50 and 70 feet. And you're gonna be looking for fish like Ciro mackerel, mutton snapper, even yellowtail snapper will hit it while trolling. Or you can take it out over the deeper edge of the reef in between like 120 and 300 feet. When you're trolling around in this area, you're going to look for fish like king mackerel, skipjack tuna, blackfin tuna. Or you can take it out deep into the stream, deeper than 650 feet. Again, it does great trolling. It's a versatile little lure. You'll be looking for fish like dolphin possibly even sailfish. Who knows, bigger predators might come around and chomp on it. Again, it's a little enticing lure and it does great to activate that impulse to feed on actively hunting fish. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned how to rig up the Yozuri Crystal Diving Minnow for trolling. Till next time, South Florida Saltwater Fishing. Going wherever the cool wind takes us.